Hey, how's it going? Okay, I found this tweet pretty interesting and I ran some tests on it, so I want to share it with you. So this tweet is posted by Jared Sumner. He's the creator of Bun, which if you don't know what that is, it's a JavaScript runtime. Uh, and I'll chat a little bit about that at the end of the video. It's not the main point. So he's saying in this tweet, lol, the example is not true. And what he's talking about is this example where uh, somebody is running code in a serverless environment. And uh, they say that in serverless environments, uh, applications are charged based on their execution time. Yes, that's true. And inefficient code can result in higher costs. Yes, that's true. So he gives this example here uh, where he has a list of uh, items in a JavaScript array. He maps over them, uh, doubling them, and then logs the result. Um, which part of this would be the slowest, by the way? Do you know? It's this part. Logging is always very slow. Okay, and in the example above, we are using the map method to multiply each item uh, in the items by array by two. Okay, that's good. Uh, this is more efficient. This is a more efficient way of uh, performing the operation than using a loop. Okay, that's the part that we're talking about here. And uh, he says, uh, which would be slower and more resource intensive. So I just want to say, anytime someone says, this is going to be more resource intensive, uh, you really have to stop and say, what are you talking about here? Is this going to be more CPU power? Is this going to be more memory? Uh, slower on the network, like wh what are we talking about when you say more resource intensive? Intensive. Okay, so I, I thought, yeah, this is this is pretty funny. And then I stopped and thought, well, Jared is a smart guy. He knows what he's talking about, but I don't really. Like a map to me, it seems like it's gonna have to be slower than a for loop, but do I know that that's true? Is there not some magic that this person might not be aware of, whereby a map is somehow uh, compiled down, right, at runtime into something that's even faster than a for loop, which again, it doesn't make sense to me, but let's test it out and see. Okay, this is the map code, uh, which is essentially what we saw in the tweet here. Okay, so what I'm doing first, and I'm gonna do this in every single version of this code, is I'm first creating a massive array. Okay, because uh, the creation of the array itself, I don't really care how long that takes. What I care more about is uh, doubling each item. Okay, so this array has 10 million records in it, which is quite a lot and they're all just random numbers. Okay, I'm going to then start timing. I'm going to do my operation. And in this case, I'm using a map. Then I'm gonna end timing and then see how long it takes. Okay, so this is the main line here, items.map, and I'm doubling each one, and let's see how long it takes. So we'll jump out of here and we'll run node map.js. Okay, it took 473 milliseconds. So half a second. All right, not very fast. Now, if you look at these other ones here, map, Okay, yeah, that's when we did loop, in place loop, pre allocated loop. They're all a little bit different and they're all going to behave a little bit differently. So let's run this again on map. Okay, so you can see it's, it's roughly the same amount of time. It's actually much slower now that I'm using OBS as well. I think it's twice as long. Uh, but them's the brakes. Okay, so now we're going to do this with just a loop. Okay, okay, so let's look at how I'm doing this. So again, I'm setting up my big array of 10 million numbers. Uh, I'm setting up an empty JavaScript array. I'm looping over all the items and I'm putting them in that array. Now, is this gonna be faster or slower than the map that we just saw? Okay, so let's run it. So node loop.js and this is slower. Way slower. Why, why is it slower? And I want to stop right here and just say, I truly don't know why it's slower, but I have a pretty good guess. All right. I, I haven't looked at, uh, you know, the V8 engine, which is what Node is using and seen how this is done under the hood, but I have a guess. And you might've assumed I have a guess because I have other versions of this, right? So let's look at a different version, a pre-allocated loop. Okay. So let's look at the difference here. How is this different than the one we just saw? So same thing, 10 million records, but here I'm pre-allocating my results array. So instead of saying it's an empty array, I'm saying, give me an array that is 10 million items long. And then I do a for loop and I just throw them in there. And is this gonna be faster? So let's uh, let's clear this up, pre-allocated loop. Okay, much faster. Okay, so this is faster, but it doesn't feel faster, right? And you can, you can probably guess why it doesn't feel faster. It's because this part right here is still taking a long time, right? I'm not timing from there. And now if I threw that in here, right? So I've pre-allocated the, the loop. 
Uh, now let's let's do it. But the pre-allocation is now part of the time. And look, it's actually quite slow. Okay, so pre-allocation is very slow here. There is probably a better way of doing this in JavaScript. This is not the kind of code I often have to worry about or write because I'm often doing web dev in JavaScript and you're not normally looping over 10 million items, ideally in someone's browser. Okay, so I, I've put this back outside of the timer and uh, if we run this again, uh, again, it's gonna take a while, uh, but then the, the final part where we're actually just throwing the items into the array uh, doesn't take that long. Okay, so what can we tell? We can see that this line is very, very slow, right? And this right here, this these lines right here are very, very fast. Okay, but we have we have one more here and this is in place loop. So what I'm doing here is I'm doubling everything in place. So same thing, I create my massive array and now I don't have a results array. So I'm taking my current array, right? And I'm just doubling each item here. And let's see how long this takes. Okay, so node in place loop. And how long is this one actually gonna take? It takes 56 milliseconds. So this one is so far the fastest one. Now I've also included this little script here uh, for myself just to run. And what this is going to do, it's gonna run all of the tests and then give their respective output time. And uh, okay, so if we look here in place loop, 47 milliseconds, pre-allocated loop, 60 milliseconds. And then the other ones are 367, 209. So it, this, this I think makes sense to me, right? So with map, it's probably doing some, it's probably doing some kind of pre-allocation under the hood where it realizes, okay, you are doing a loop. Uh, you're, you're mapping, how big is this thing? Okay, let, let's do that. With loop, it doesn't know. I'm again, guessing, but every time you're just appending, appending, appending. So the underlying uh, array is probably gonna have to keep growing in size. Okay, but if you look carefully at the line I just ran, I didn't use node, right? I'm using something called bun. So bun is an alternative, alternate? Anyway, it's a different JavaScript runtime. So I can do node loop.js or I can do, uh, let's wait, okay. Or I can do bun loop.js and you'll see that bun is significantly faster. Okay, here's the website for bun and it's saying bun is a new JavaScript runtime built for speed with native bundler, transpiler. Anyway, it's, it's the new hotness in the JavaScript world. So a node on loop dot js right and then uh and then afterwards we can do a bun on which was the fastest one in no yeah in place right okay let's see how long these two take so this is the be the biggest difference right so 805 milliseconds versus 40 milliseconds one other thing i really like here is uh so i have a file here called ts test uh so this is a typescript file and uh doesn't do a lot right but if i run node against it um ts test it's going to get mad because it's gonna say missing initializer in const declaration. It doesn't know what's happening here, right? But if I run bun against it, uh, TS test, bun is gonna be perfectly happy to run it. The cool thing with bun is that uh, now that it supports TypeScript and uh, it is so fast to start, it's faster than Node to start, I could theoretically use TypeScript as like a scripting language like I would Python uh, in my in my day-to-day -day work, right? Uh, Non-web related, right? So uh, for example, I have this file here, greet.ts, so I have a shebang saying, uh, let's use bun and then just JavaScript. And then I'm grabbing the arguments from bun. Uh, so I can do this greet Tom and then hello there, Tom. So I'm saying hello to myself. I'll also say hello to you and that will work too. Oh, you shouldn't have two exclamation marks. That's a mistake. 